Well, hello there, Retro PC Durham. It's Chris here with another video. We got another laptop, this Dell. Yeah, this uh, pretty pretty decent pretty decent little laptop here we got on a donation. We're going to take a look at here. We got it all ready to go. Here's the top lid here. Um, this side we've got our VGA output. We've got our... Uh, We've got our um, USB slash eSATA port combo, another USB port ventilation. Um, you'll notice here, <laughs> the um, many of the laptops I get, donations I get sometimes, they just don't come with the hard drives anymore. And unfortunately, sometimes with laptops, people donate the laptop and they remove the hard drive, but they also remove the cover for it. So there is no cover on this. So what I end up doing is, is putting some shielding over top of the drive here. Luckily enough though, the screws that hold the drive in place, the screws that hold the drive in place um, are in the top. So it actually holds it in place in the system pretty pretty smoothly, can't pull it out. So I guess that's you know part of the good stuff there. Uh, front panel, we've got a uh, release here for the screen and then a blank here to hold your SD card. And then when we come around this side here, we've got our micro or mini, whatever, uh, Firewire port. We've got an Express Card port here, which I can remove the shield for, so you can get an Express Card into that. Then we've got our optical drive here, which is removable. We've got a manual shutoff for our Wi-Fi audio ports, a couple more USB ports as well. And then we'll take a look at the bottom here. We've got a battery, which will slide out. And it's one of these cool ones here where you push the button and it shows you how much battery is remaining, life is remaining on the battery itself. Uh, some of these models may have come with a uh, WAN card. That's where your SIM card would have gone in or would go in if you had the uh, WAN card on it. And I wanted to show on the bottom here was kind of cool um, just from a serviceability standpoint. One screw right in the middle. And it's a captive screw. And the whole bottom panel here pops off for serviceability. I think that's kind of cool, right? The fact that I have such easy serviceability in the system. Here's where, again, I mentioned if you had WN, you would install it into this slot here and the antennas are ready to go. You've got a Wi-Fi card here, our two memory DIMM slots, our processor is underneath this heat sink here, and then it extends out and covers up a couple of chipsets. We've got our CMOS battery, our cooling fan, and then we've got our uh, network card, and I think it might be Bluetooth as well, I can't remember, um, on this part here. And yeah, so kind of cool that you can get access to service, like everything you need to service on the system pretty much. And as I mentioned, your optical drive slides right out. So it makes it really easy. Uh, from a serviceability standpoint, and then I think it was only like two or three more screws or something like that to remove the keyboard. So, uh, you know, something that's great about business, these business laptops when they're made correctly. And I find only, I find generally, apart from ThinkPads and Dells, I, I have a lot of trouble finding the business laptops that actually have this level of serviceability. Like the HP ones, it's basically never. <laughs> and, uh, you know, nothing else really... I haven't really come across any other laptop manufacturers that make something that really is a business-minded laptop. They're all for consumer grader or gaming. Anyways, uh, we've got our stickers here. Small touchpad, which is appropriate for the time. This is like a 2010, 9 era machine. Um, our Dell version of a track point with the buttons that are way too close to the track point. I always have a problem with this. I'm expecting the buttons to be down here, and they're way too close for where my fingers want to be for using a track point. Uh, keyboard is okay to type on. My fingers, you know, you don't, you're not going under the other keys too badly. Um, so it's okay. And then uh, our power button. Uh, screen here is just a standard. Uh, I think this is a 14 inch uh, screen that we've got on here. And it does have an integrated uh, microphone and webcam as well. So a pretty good machine in terms of being able to uh, use for generic purposes. Let's get it booted up and we'll take a look at Windows. Okay, we are now booting into uh, our Windows environment. This is a standard screen, so no touch ca capacitance on it. And I believe it's a 
I believe it's a 768p screen. It's not a very high resolution screen. We'll just open up here. Oh no, it is a 900p. So I mean, that's dis it's it's decent. Um, again, not a 1080p screen, but a 900p screen is okay. It'll get the job done. Let's open up hardware info and we'll show off what kind of hardware specs we have in this system. Hardware info up and running here. I'll show off our Intel Core 2 Duo P8600. So this is a dual core, two threaded processor of the Penryn series. We're running at about, uh, I think usually around 1.6 gigahertz and then it can boost up to like 2.4, 2.5 gigahertz. Uh, for a short period of time, so it's okay, gets the job done. Again, what's more important is um, for these these older processors is, you know, the more instruction sets it actually has available, the better it, chance it's going to be able to handle running modern workloads without having to ra rely on brute force. So having up to SEC 4.1 is pretty good. Um, obviously, we don't have AVX instruction sets, so gaming and stuff is really not something you'd be able to do. Not that I would be gaming on a business laptop that doesn't even have a real GP unit unit. Um, it does have this uh, Quadro NVS 160M, which has got a 256 megabytes of, of DDR2 memory in it. So again, it's it's a it's good to have a discrete graphics card, but it's not going to be anything super special. Uh, memory wise, we got a pair of uh, Hynix 2 gig uh, DDR2 memory sticks that are in there. So that's running well total of four gig worth of memory and then we got a 500 gig uh, western digital drive and then that uh, dvd rewriter in there as well so pretty decent specs right again that we're going to be using this for you know standard business productivity uh, web browsing google classroom that type of activity works perfectly fine let's head over to microsoft edge here and we're going to go to youtube and take a look at our crab rave test I'm going to get it uh, loaded up here and we'll take a look at how well it runs. Okay, we're all queued up here. Let's take a look and see how well this goes. We're on 1080p and we're all buffered up again, but just taking a look at how this is going. I'm not really seeing, I'm seeing a little bit of hesitation in the screen, um, although we're not dropping any frames. so. What I'm suspecting is that the processor's gonna have trouble running this at 1080p, gonna have trouble running like full stream 1080p stuff. If I drop this down to 720p, I have a feeling we're gonna have a much better time. Yeah, I can, if you, you can probably hear that, you can hear it in the audio, how it's given a little bit of, it's struggling a little bit. So that could be, that could be the processor that's having a, an issue. It's possible that it's also the audio driver. So this was, I think, I don't think I had to install any drivers on this at all. Windows 10 picked up all the drivers that it needed. It's possible that the audio drivers that Windows loaded are not the best. So I might have to take a look at that, but you know, it works. But again, for a machine that's what, 10 years old, uh, it's doing an okay job, uh, maybe more than 10 years old. Um, and again, I, I use the, you know, running a, a YouTube video here as something that's just enough, you know, system requirements to be able to handle. Like this is what you would expect from a streaming experience. So doing a Zoom meeting or or playing an online game or or Google Classroom or Hangouts or whatever is going to be a similar level of experience in terms of computing requirements. So a little bit of static here is kind of concerning, but I think it's okay. I think it'll, you know, it'll work. So that will be all for that. So I hope you enjoyed checking out this Dell Latitude E6400 with me. As always, I hope you're staying safe and healthy. We'll catch you in the next one.